Hello zusammen, I'm your vlog Dave and today we're gonna take a linguistic look so to speak at a Lindemann track which is Ach so gern. What could it be about? What is my interpretation of it? What do the German lyrics translate to in English? Well at least in my translation of them. And what is linguistically interesting about it? Let's find that out. The title Ach so gern is a rather poetic modal particle. In the German language, die Partikel, Singular, die Partikel in Plural are pretty much additions to expressions and sentences which underline the expressed statement. I'd say it means something like oh so gladly, with gern being a slightly shorter form of gerne, gladly or pleasantly. The interjection ach is common in German, yet you wouldn't really use it in usual conversations. You might rather find that one being used in creative texts like here. Let's take a look at the first verse. Ich kannte viele schöne Damen auf dieser schönen weiten Welt. Mit Fug und Recht kann man da sagen, ich war ein wahrer Frauenheld. Man sagt mir nach, ich wäre schamlos, so herz und lieblos und frivol. Man meint, ich hätte sie gezwungen. Nein, die Wahrheit liegt dazwischen wohl. Right from the get-go, this song is quite the opposite of mysterious or ambiguous. Certain phrasings are quite poetic and not really standard German, which is common in most of Till's lyrics. Lines 3 and 4 are a good example. They are semantically connected, yet the sentence structure is very poetic and unusual in that sense. Mit Fug und Recht kann man da sagen, ich war ein wahrer Frauenheld. In standard German, you'd probably connect both parts with the conjunction das, that, maybe like this. Mit Fug und Recht kann man da sagen, dass ich ein wahrer Frauenheld war. As you can see, expressing it like this also affects the word order. The verb war, was, can be found at the end of the sentence here. And talking about line 3, mit Fug und Recht is a pretty old German phrase, a saying pretty much, which basically means rightfully so. It even includes the noun das Recht, the right or justice. Man sagt in line 5 would actually mean one says, since the indefinite pronoun man basically is a singular term, which means one or you in English. In many contexts it also gets used for an undefined or unknown group of people, which probably applies to this situation as well. That's why I translated it to they say instead of you say or one says. Another interesting German term here is the compound word der Frauenheld, singular, die Frauenhelden, plural. It consists of die Frau, singular, die Frauen, plural, the woman, and der Held, singular, die Helden, plural, the hero. Translated literally, it means woman hero, the hero of women. And that's pretty much what the lyrical eye thinks about themselves, I think. It's a man who seems to think no woman can escape his sex appeal. And uh, well, yeah, those kinds of things. In this song he tells about his love hunt, which, as we learn in the last two lines here, might not always have been that einvernehmlich, consensual, on the women's side. We don't really know if that's just a rumor or more yet, so let's wait and see, I guess. The first chorus goes like this. Denn ach so gern hab ich die Frauen geküsst und doch nicht immer auf den Mund. Ich wollte immer wissen, wie es ist und küsste mir die Lippen bunt. Out of erotic curiosity, the lyrical eye basically got addicted to kissing women. And apart from being a subtle erotic statement, the second line might also serve as another hint at that he could have gone too far at some point. In German, we often keep the article to nouns in many situations and contexts. Denn auch so gern hab ich die Frauen geküsst. Whereas in English, the flow sounds way more natural without the article. Cause I have kissed women oh so gladly. In this particular case, the German line could also work without the article style-wise though. Semantically, I've merged the two words und doch at the start of line 2 to yet in English. Although technically yet only relates to the adverb doch instead of the conjunction und, and. And yet not always on the mouth. Sounds stranger than simply yet not always, I think. Context-wise, you probably would expect the last line to end in a similar sounding adjective in German. Wund, sore. Instead, it ends in bunt, colorful. 
which could imply that each time he had traces of differently colored lipsticks on his lips from kissing various women. This would underline the aforementioned womanizer imagery. Let's continue with verse 2. Ich küsste nicht nur rote Wangen, ich hatte einfach alles lieb. Man sagt, ich sieche vor Verlangen, besessen so von Paarungstrieb. Sie meinten, ich wär tief gefallen in ein Meer von Libido. Man sagt, ich sieche vor Verlangen, das kann man so sehen oder so. If you already know some basic German verbs, you might have recognized the Seem in the last line. And yes, you're totally right, it usually means to see or to look. However, in this context, it might rather be translated to to judge, in the sense of to think about something a certain way, to make up your mind about something. The conjugated verb sieche in line 3 is not as common in this form. I'd say it's mostly used as dahinsiechen or vor sich hinsiechen, which mean the same. Again, we've basically got two perspectives mentioned here. The lyrical eye's own perspective and what other people think of him and how they perceive the situation. I particularly like the English translation of line 3, respectively line 7. Copulation, appetite, uh, has a very, uh, I mean, an interesting ring, a nice ring uh, to it, I guess. I couldn't come up with a proper English equivalent term to that one. No, I actually can't. I mean, in German, der Paarungstrieb singular, die Paarungstriebe plural is a compound word, so that's very too that. A compound word, of course, well, German language, yeah, strikes again, but um, yeah, that's why I came up with, I coined the term copulation appetite. Anyway, now we're faced with the second part of the chorus. Ich nahm sie einfach in die Arme und manche hauchte leise Nein. Doch ich kannte kein Erbarmen. Am Ende sollten sie es bereuen. In case of line 5, the English language might be superior in terms of linguistic efficiency, if that makes sense. Because, well, jemanden in die Arme nehmen simply turns to, uh, to hug someone in English. Way shorter. Translated literally, it means to take someone in or into the arms. Line 7 is a good example of how cool English sayings can be. Kein Erbarmen kennen is a fixed phrase in German. It basically translates to to know no mercy. But I think the English to take no prisoners sounds really cool. In German you could also say keine Gefangenen nehmen or keine Gefangenen machen, which practically is a literal equivalent. Also note that line 6 is written in singular as opposed to all other lines in the chorus. You can see that by looking at the verb's ending. Hauchte is hauchen, to aspirate in the third person singular, preteritum, indicative mode, active. Actually, am Ende in line 8 could mean both at the end of something or subsequently, in the end. The third and last verse goes like this. Wie das Kaninchen vor der Schlange. Ein kalter Blick, dann biss ich zu. Und das Gift ruft ein Verlangen. Ließe nimmer mich in Ruh. Ach, die Frauen, all die Treuen. Und manches Herz brach wohl entzwei. Am Ende sollten sie es bereuen. So viele Tränen und Geschrei. Have you noticed the subtle difference in line 7 compared to the similar line Am Ende sollten sie es bereuen in the last line of the chorus? In the chorus line it's sollten. Should, it tells of the past, what was going to happen as a result of the women not obeying his demands and desires. In this case it's sollen without the T, should or shall, generally speaking or targeted towards the future. Maybe like, I'm still gonna operate the way I always have and they still need to satisfy my needs. The last chorus only differs in the last lines. Doch ich kannte kein Erbarmen, soll damit sie glücklich sein. Babaram, bababaram. Now he's talking about a single woman again, but his activities still remain the same. In general, this song seems to be about die sexuelle Belästigung, the sexual harassment and probably even more than that. So I heard you find my videos helpful, entertaining and you really enjoy them? Well, thank you very much in the first place. The crowdfunding page Patreon is definitely one of the best ways to say thank you Dave and to support me. Honest heartfelt thanks for doing that, because every little bit helps. 
Thanks for your attention and now enjoy the rest of the video. I want to give a big shout out to my good friend Pascal aka Der Rockshop because he has composed a whole song for me and that is pretty much my intro melody from now on. You might recognize him from a couple of Rammstein challenge videos we've done before and if you enjoy that melody and if you want to listen to the whole song on his channel, well check it out in the video description and also check out his channel because he also makes videos about Rammstein and other bands from a more well, instrumental musical perspective and he knows what he's doing as well. So greatly appreciated and greatly recommended. I think Ach so Gern is one of those songs that or in which you can actually read many things into if you want like reading between the lines and stuff, which don't necessarily have to be in the lyrics themselves, if you know what I mean. And what I also don't know is what you think about this song. Tell me in the comments and of course feel free to suggest other German songs that I could actually tackle in future videos. And if you wanna really help me out as a YouTuber, as um, well, that German guy who tries to talk about German lyrics and teach some German along the way, feel free to share my videos with others because that really helps immensely. And of course, you can also check out my social media links and my support options in the video description down below, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, even for German gaming live streams and the like. And of course, PayPal and Patreon as monetary support options. Voluntary, of course, everything, so don't worry. Don't feel forced or obliged to do anything there. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, everyone. I'm your Vlog Dave. Tschüss und bis zum nächsten Mal.